All right, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. It's nice to be here in Berlin. Great weather, good company. Uh, so, my name is Wei Mei Yo. I work at the Sony Developer Relations team. Uh, today, I'm also doing a talk with a colleague of mine, uh, Ahmed. And uh, yeah, both of us work at uh, Sony Developer Relations. We support uh, partner developers uh, to integrate their solutions with uh, Sony products. Uh, so like last year, we have actually been working with uh, the Sony Smart Eyeglass. And today's talk is really to share and also to inspire you to do something in this area. Um, so what is augmented reality? I mean, you know, you've seen Iron Man, and um, this is, you know, a screen dump uh, that you usually see uh, on the movie. And um, augmented reality really is, you know, the easiest way to uh, explain it in a presentation is to actually, um, you know, look at this, where you can see the bridge, uh, which is the real world object, and then you have all these, you know, superimposed digital objects or pieces of information uh, that tells um, Iron Man, you know, where the missile is going and 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 how how much distance he has uh, towards uh, you know the bridge, and um, I mean the key points here would be that the real world objects are the bridge and the uh, the, the garage tunnel that you can see. And uh, the di digital objects are actually superimposed. Um, so augmented reality, I mean, there is also a formal definition from uh, academia. And uh, this guy called Professor Ronald Azuma, his definition is uh, actually the mostly wi uh, most widely accepted uh, definition and also a digestible one, I would say. So yeah, there's three characteristics. Uh, one is that uh, you know AR is actually combining both real world objects and virtual images into one, uh, and you see both at the same time. Uh, another thing is that it's interactive, so you can sort of interact with the, the virtual objects. Either you can sort of you know click on it to actually see more information about it, or it actually sort of um, you know pops up extra information when when something changes. Another point is that it is registered in 3D. So the virtual objects actually look like they are fixed in space. So AR actually supplements reality rather than actually you know, um, overriding it or replacing it. That's virtual reality if, if you, know, you don't see the real world of it. And um, yeah, so as, yes, OK, sorry. <laughs> um, so I think most of us have experienced AR today uh, via the mobile phone, so which is a handheld AR experience, very similar to what you see here in the pictures. And um, there's two advantages that we think uh, this has, in the sense that one is it is not so immersive, because you're actually seeing and experiencing the world through a mobile phone. I think you know that you know that quite well when you actually sort of like spend too much time trying to take pictures <laughs> and not really actually being in the moment of the event. So that, that is one disadvantage that we see with the mobile handheld AR experience. The other one is that it is not really hands-free because you know you need both hands to either hold the mobile phone or one hand to hold the mobile phone and you know the other hand to sort of interact with the uh, uh, the, the surface. Um, so we're not really there yet. I mean, you know, with, with the mobile handheld um, AR experience, uh, with giving the, that sort of like, you know, um, immersive experience that you see in the Iron Man, Iron Man movies. Um, but at least the technology to make that type of uh, experience is kind of getting commercialized more, uh, enough to bring us closer to that target. Uh, so if the mobile phone doesn't provide good UX for AR, what then? And this is where we come to where we think that uh, we see that smart glasses are actually a much better form factor for delivering this kind of uh, AR UX. And there are already actually quite a few models out there uh, that, you know, of smart glasses that actually provide, um, you know, that you can buy and, and actually play around and, and experiment with it. So this picture here 
that you see is actually a picture from one of our partners, APX Labs. They actually provide uh, custom solutions for uh, enterprise customers who want to use AR technology to improve their business operations. So, and I mean, they are actually sort of making strides in, in this area to, to try to provide a good uh, AR U, UX for, you know, at least the enterprise use case. Yeah, so when it comes to AR and smart glasses, I mean, the, the point is that you get an immersive experience compared to the mobile uh, handheld experience. And um, now you can sort of like focus on, you know, sort of, yeah, being in the moment, seeing what, you know, focusing on your task at hand. Because now the information is appearing right in front of your eyes because you are wearing them, a display. And um, you, you know, you don't, you're not distracted with, you know, trying to operate another uh, device to, to, uh, to go for it. So, and the other point is that with smart glasses, the, your hands are a little bit more free, uh, or they, are, they can be free. It depends on you know, um, how the, you design the user interaction for it, but uh, at least you have a possibility to offer the user to actually have their hands you know, a bit more free than, than just holding the, the, uh, the device itself. So these two screenshots up here, uh, they are actually again from APX Labs, our partner, um, where the first one, you can see that it's actually um, a technician trying to go about uh, you know, uh, fixing some cylinders or engine, and he gets the information about what task he needs to do right in front of his eyes, instead of you know, getting distracted by uh, checking his mobile phone or smartwatch or, or, or you know, um, or let's say uh, even a, a paper and a, and a notepad. So now he gets the information right in front of his, his eyes to actually know what to, he needs to do. And the other one here is actually in a hospital setting where a doctor could actually be just going around, um, you know, helping patients or looking after patients, and they would get the vital statistics of the patients, you know, in front of the eyes, instead of, uh, you know, checking paper charts and, and, <laughs> and whatnot. So, but anyway, um, I could go on, and uh, I would say that uh, it's, um, it's something that you have to try. Uh, try it out yourself. And uh, downstairs in the Sony booth, I mean, we have glasses, uh, smart glasses for you to try out, and uh, you, you can, um, you know, get, I, I think you will get the picture much better from there. So, when it comes to, you know, user interfacing possibilities or user interaction possibilities with smart glass to get a good AR experience, I mean, we have thought about um, three different possibilities. Uh, one is, you know, you use sound um, or voice input. So in this case, uh, you will actually speak, and then you know, you uh, the user will actually get the information, feedback, you know, in, in the form of speech. The other one is to actually use gestures to actually, you know, let's say navigate the UI or or to rotate, uh, you know, certain objects, that, uh, the virtual object that you see in the in the eyes. Um, and this will be reliant on the sensor data that, um, either, that is either on the device or, let's say, on the smartphone. Um, a third point, would, a third possibility is actually to use an accessory, like, let's say, a control unit. Um, so which one to provide? I mean, you have to design or consider what is your target user, uh, you know, what, is, what kind of environment he's actually operating in. So, for example, there is no, you know, one method that is best or, you know, um, the, that is better than any other. So, it, in a, like, for example, in a situation where, let's say, your target user is working in a very noisy environment, uh, let's say, in an airport, then sound might not be a very good user interface, uh, uh, you know, mechanism. But uh, something else like uh, gestures or providing a uh, accessory would be, you know, could be uh, 
a much better use, uh, what provide a much better user interface uh, experience. So yeah, these are the three possibilities that we have thought about, but uh, it's most likely not uh, all. And um, you know, so I mean, yeah. The so for Sony Smart Eyeglass, what we have done is that uh, we have kind of looked at uh, to see what how we could actually um, you know create or devise uh, new kinds of uh, user interface uh, possibilities. And uh, the Smart Eyeglass actually has provided a true AR experience because you get the information right in front of your eyes. I mean, it's binocular, so you get information in both sides, not just one-sided. And the display is really clear because, so that you can actually see the real world uh, objects very clearly as much as you can see you know, the, um, the digital objects. And it's super thin. So, you know, you don't really, I mean, you don't really know that it's actually smart glasses. You, don't, you can't see that, you know, it's actually um, uh, a special, uh, I mean, a special kind of glasses. So the, um, it's very light as well as, you know, uh, so it's very easy to actually wear it and you don't feel eye strain or, or you know, um, strain on your, on your, on your um, head. And um, in this case, uh, the glasses work with Android smartphones. So what is, it supports uh, Android 4.4. And it has several sensors on it, like accelerometer, gyroscope, um, compass, so, and, um, and that you can actually use. And but the currently, the Smart Eyeglass UI interaction is actually via a control box. So here that I have circled, that is what the user actually uses to interact uh, with the UI in the uh, smart glasses. The uh, display, I mean, the, the, the thing that is on the TV screen is just to actually um, you know, show what the user could actually see if, let's say, he was standing in this location. It's just uh, because this location that is in the TV picture is actually somewhere else. And what they wanted to do was to actually show that if you are, the user is standing in this location, this is what he would see with the smart glasses. And anyway, the control box has a touchpad and hardware buttons. And, uh, but we have, uh, through the talks that we have with our partners, we have found out that, you know, it's like, this is perhaps not a really good uh, or intuitive way of uh, interacting with, uh, you know, the um, user interface because co the control box is, you know, uh, they have to always figure out where to, where to press and where to touch. So we actually did some experiments um, to actually try to find alternative ways. Um, and these are just demo applications that we have uh, just sort of experimented by ourselves. Uh, one is to actually control the 3D objects using the smart eyeglass uh, sensors. So as I said just now, this, the glasses have actually sensors like a sarometer, compass, gyroscope. So we are use, one, one experiment was to actually use these to actually try to manipulate the objects that you see in the display. The other option was to actually use a smartwatch tree to actually you know, provide a user interaction kind of uh, mechanism. And now I will get my colleague, Ahmed, to actually tell you more about uh, the details of these experiments that uh, we have uh, done. And um, so Ahmed, come on. Hello. Before I proceed any further, uh, I want to say I'm really excited to be here today. I um, uh, got opportunity to meet a lot of skilled uh, augmented reality developers today here. So I actually want to take a photo of uh, this moment as a memory before proceeding further. Thank you so much. <laughs> so let me introduce you myself. Uh, I was a full-stack developer uh, serving as a freelancer before joining Sony. And uh, I joined Sony around a year ago, and I was very lucky to be uh, working on the smart eyeglass because I'm really interested in uh, 
devices and, uh, and open hardware movement in general. So this position gave me opportunity to, to play with this really exciting technology beforehand, uh, before it's uh, out already. And uh, I managed to do some experiments, and I would like to try to share uh, those experiences with you. So before uh, going down the to those road, that road and uh, sharing my experiences, I would like to point out how the smart eyeglass works in the system level, in the background. So actually, smart eyeglass applications run on the phone. Uh, this allows a smart eyeglass box and the general glass to be really lightweight. And it also allows us to save a lot of battery life because uh, it leverages the CPU power on the phone and uh, all the processing is done on the phone. So you run the application on the phone side, and once the rendering of the application is done, it sends the bitmap to the class. And uh, aside from uh, these benefits, it also provides the developers one other aspect of advantage. Because when you have the application running on the phone, you don't need to handle uh, any kind of communication protocols like you would do with uh, Android Wear, for example. For Android Wear, you have to create a node, and then you have to communicate over that. But uh, on Smart Eyeglass, since application is already on the phone, you can directly leverage all uh, phone functions, such as GPS, internet connection, etc. And uh, also, this means uh, the application structure itself is an Android project. So we are all familiar with that. And it really helps us uh, get started with it really quickly. So I believe uh, we all got pretty much familiar with this smart eyeglass architecture. And uh, I would like to go on to next slide. and. I would like to talk about my first application for Smart Eyeglass. And uh, it was actually a 3D model viewer. It really sounds like it doesn't serve to any specific purpose. It's more like a general purpose application. Uh, my plan uh, on developing this was to actually create some uh, library that would allow me to use OpenGL and uh, 3D graphics on Smart Eyeglass because uh, the SDK itself only provides you a way to display bitmaps, nothing uh, 3D. Uh, but I want to uh, show some exciting 3D dynamic graphics. And to do that, you need some kind of OpenGL or some other kind of type of rendering engine. So there was a bit of a challenge to get the uh, OpenGL working with the Smart Eyeglass SDK. So I started creating this library. And uh, to do this, I have OpenGL in one end, rendering uh, the frame. But in the other end, I need a bitmap. And uh, since Smart Eyeglass applications run on the background, on the phone, I do not want uh, any kind of surface weave, any visible layout. Uh, that, that would mean that I would have to keep the smartphone screen on always, uh, which I don't want, really. So I created a pixel buffer handler uh, for OpenGL which handles all the initialization of the OpenGL process and rendering and so on. And at the end, it gives you the bitmap to use on the smart eyeglass. So you can uh, ask for another render frame whenever you need it from the pixel buffer. And uh, it gives you a dynamic updated frame. So you can, on the OpenGL side, you have your renderer, and you can do your manipulations, mathematical operations, and everything. And when on the Smart Eyeglass application, you request for an updated frame, it just gives you that. It's as simple as that. And uh, you see the structure here? I, and I tried to keep the library really consistent with the usual Android uh, GL surface view. So the library I developed asks you for a GL surface view render uh, instance, which is widely used for Android, basically, for OpenGL implementations. So it, I think it may uh, work with many Android game engines already. I haven't tried, but I believe it, it, it will work. Uh, I directly use the low-level OpenGL for rendering. So once you get uh, your GL surface renderer done, let's say, for example, what I did was a model renderer. It parses a mesh uh, object file, and it renders it in OpenGL uh, view. 
and you set your render to pixel buffer, and on the Smart Algas app, you get the bitmap, and it uh, shows up like, like this. As you see here, you have the 3D model. Uh, so it gives uh, you a really immersive uh, augmented reality experience, I would say. One part still missing is the object tracking, which I'm planning to do uh, maybe later on when I have time. But I think once that is already also done, it will be like a complete augmented reality experience. But for now, it's only a, a model uh, rotated by uh, nine axis sensors on the glass. So you see a model, and you can look around the model, but it will shift because I don't have object tracking. But it's actually possible because uh, we have JPEG stream on the Smart Eyeglass camera, so you can uh, keep, the, keep listening for the JPEG stream, and you can uh, do some kind of optical flow tracking, so you can keep the object in place. So that's also possible because uh, in the previous hackathons uh, we've, been, we've attended, we've seen some teams worked on uh, OpenCV uh, with Smart Eyeglass, and they managed to do face uh, tracking and face recognition. So from the SDK and the performance point of view, it uh, really works, and uh, it just needs some extra exp uh, implementation to get to that point, which I'm looking forward to do. Uh, and other than that, I would like to point out, actually, this application is open source. So if you're also interested in that kind of application, you can go on and do that before I do. And you can publish it on Play Store. And you can even sell it, because it's a BSD licensed. Uh, so it's uh, OK to share it uh, and uh, sell it uh, directly with that license. And uh, to give you a, a deeper understanding how it works, so. On the smart eyeglass uh, activity, I'm getting uh, sensor data, and I'm running it through some mathematical operations in sensor data operation function. Then I'm, uh, on the OpenGL side, I'm just rotating the object, depending on the rotations from the sensor. So this is one way to handle user interactions in augmented reality through head tracking. And uh, it's actually. Uh, not so unfamiliar to us. Uh, if you if you have been following uh, virtual reality development in last uh, two years or something, they uh, really depend on head tracking a lot, and uh, it's one way to really offer an immersive experience. And uh, we see that uh, they, uh, there are so many different solutions already for virtual reality, but not so much for augmented reality. And uh, I see this as a, as a really good opportunity for people who want to drive innovation and uh, be a pioneer in this area. Because uh, augmented reality is coming back from uh, virtual reality, but it also requires uh, similar solutions and similar applications. And uh, we already have inspiration from virtual reality. So you can actually directly use head tracking sensors and uh, apply these to your application. But there are, I believe, there are other alternative solutions, such as pointing via sensors or uh, uh, directing the user, and so on. So these are, this is one way to handle user interaction with sensors. And uh, one other way I found out was uh, using a smartwatch. And uh, this came on later on, actually, after uh, using a smart eyeglass at events. And I had to handle this box. Maybe if you try it downstairs, you also realize that I had to like uh, take care of this, push some buttons, and also smart eyeglass. And this was a bit of a hindrance for me, and I wanted something else, something I'm more familiar with, and that is smart eyeglass. Uh, sorry, smart watch, smart watches. Because uh, when you have this box, you are kind of uh, attached to it with the cable and everything, and it doesn't really offer a nice experience. But let's say you have the con complete control of your application with a smart watch, then you can just attach this box let's say, on your back. And then you have the smartwatch on your hand already. And on the smartwatch, you also have sensors, which you can also facilitate in your application. Anyway, then uh, your hands are more free, actually. You don't need to push some buttons, and you can handle and do some other stuff. And uh, since the smartwatch is an uh, attached device to some other joint of your body, so you can really feel the freedom when you really experience it. 
So this was the another app. This was another solution I uh, developed, and then uh, we contacted uh, with some of our partners, and they also found found this very useful. And actually, they are working on the solutions uh, based on this. And I believe this will increase uh, the immersive and the intuitive experience for augmented reality. So these two were the basic uh, solutions I've managed to try so far, but I believe there will be more things uh, coming for augmented reality user interactions and user experience in general. And it's an area that is really fertile to innovation and uh, it, I think at this point it's really easy to become a pioneer by developing some solutions because everybody is looking into this area. We see companies are trying to build new hardware, new solutions, and uh, I think uh, for developers, uh, the key to take away from uh, this, imp this uh, emerging technology would be uh, developing for user experience solutions and bringing uh, interaction. Uh, solutions into this equation. And uh, actually, maybe you've heard of Internet of Things. And I thought about this a bit. And I thought, well, we have quite so many devices now uh, that we are using smartwatches and smart eyeglasses. Maybe like, it's actually called the uh, body area network. And I, I prefer to call it a connection of things, kind of similar to something we are familiar with, which is Internet of Things. So. This shows the way the smartwatch controller application works. Since we already have the Android, we are communicating with the phone. And the smart eyeglass application already runs on the phone. All you need to do is to get the commands from Android Wear, which is done with Google's library. Then once you get the command on the phone, it's really easy to apply to your application, because you just say, like, do this, do that, and so on. And what I did so far is uh, just by a set of buttons, but even that improved the uh, user experience a lot. And I cannot imagine how much uh, further it would take if we implemented those sensors. Imagine like doing uh, some kind of gesture to move in the augmented reality user experience. I think that would be really revol revolutionary. And uh, one other thing I want to point out is like, if you observe the uh, emergence of virtual reality, you see they implement a lot of different accessories, like for example, leap motion, my armband that we see implemented. And it really creates a, that a wow experience for the user. You see, like uh, you completely leave all the mouse, keyboard, and everything. You just use it with gestures. And I think same thing will happen for the augmented reality really soon. And, uh, I think it just waits, uh, waits uh, for implementation, for developers' interest. And, uh, yeah. This was the challenge in user exper experience for AR. And I mentioned that gesture tracking will be really important for this uh, area. And then another thing I would like to point out is, aside from sensors and third-party accessories, uh, in all of the smart glasses in the market, we have camera, if you realized. And uh, aside from just taking pictures, actually, it can be leveraged to develop context-aware applications. And this is actually a key point in augmented reality. Because uh, with augmented reality, you should avoid uh, user input as much as possible. Applications should be able to uh, provide the necessary information without any input from the user. To do that, you have to have, uh, make uh, environment-aware or context-aware applications through the camera. So using camera, you can just detect uh, where the user is, where he's passing through. Like, uh, for example, in uh, Terminator movies, when Terminator runs through some place, it just automatically draws a path, pathway automatically without any input. I think that's, that's the kind of uh, context-aware solution. The, AR is uh, waiting for. And uh, I mentioned the smartwatches, and I think armbands will also be an integral point in the solution. And uh, we see Mio armband has a really nice uh, combination of muscle sensors and the nine axis sensor, which can allow this kind of like, like in the minority report movie. You can really do that now uh, uh, with the current technology with smart eyeglass and combine it with smartwatch or Mio armband maybe. 
you can achieve this technology actually. Yeah. So that was pretty much all I can say for the user experience. And if you are interested in developing for smart eyeglass uh, and you want to get started, take a look at it. How about it is? We have uh, this site, and it's really quickly easy to get started. And we have an emulator on uh, running on Android. So even without the smart eyeglass, you can just download the, the SDK really quickly. And the emulator allows you to install applications from Play Store or just run sample codes, uh, sample applications that we provide with SDK. And you can just compile and try out with the emulator really quickly. I, I, I really recommend to do that, because as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's really open to innovation, and it's really exciting area. And uh, one other thing I would like to mention is the smart eyeglass is uh, actually available for purchase today. And uh, this is really exciting because when you look look for the smart glass market, uh, it's really hard to find the really high transparency display uh, AR glasses. And uh, with smart eye glass, if you try it downstairs, you already probably experienced it. Aside from the graphic area, you can really see behind and see through. And uh, I believe this is an exciting moment for the uh, smart eye glasses augmented reality that it is publicly available, and I think uh, this will help uh, grow uh, uh, customer base and the demand for the solutions and the implementations in this area. And uh, yeah, yeah, I welcome you to our booth downstairs, and I will demo the uh, 3D model viewer application I made, and uh, we also have some other demos, fun, uh, a fun game that you can try out, and we also have other devices you can also try out. So, Please welcome and try it out. So, Thank you. That was all from me.